Welcome to the most listened to golf in the world, the Fairways of Life show, on air, online, and around the world, with the most candid interviews, unforgettable stories, taking you beyond the ropes. Here's your host, New York Times best-selling author, Matt Adams. What is going on, folks? Welcome into the Fairways of Life show. Masters Week is upon us. Cannot wait for everything that lies in store and sharing it with you guys this week. We are obviously on air this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm heading out uh, later on today, so we'll be remote the next couple of days. Like I said, streaming each of them. Then we're going to get out of your way from Thursday onward so that you guys can enjoy everything that's going on with the Masters. What an incredible week slash weekend of sport. What we had, Nelly Korda wins for the fourth consecutive start on the LPGA. We're going to get into that in just a second. On the PGA Tour, we have a playoff with Akshay at all of 22 years old. He's now 2-0 in playoffs on the PGA Tour. Live down in Miami. That goes into a playoff. We're going to get into the details of that as well. I want to talk to you a lot about what's going on at Augusta National. Not only today, I want to talk about odds and more. I, I'm sure Dom has a Masters-related question of the day, which uh, we'll get to him in a little bit here. The Augusta National Women's Amateur, congratulations. Uh, the drive, chip, and putt this past weekend. Liverpool versus Man United was this past weekend. 2-2 draw. Wasn't enough to get Liverpool to the top of the table the way I wanted. Red Sox-Yankees win. Congrats to South Carolina. Undefeated, 38-0. Pretty impressive on that. Uh, UConn-Purdue coming up tonight. A couple weeks to the hockey playoffs. Baseball, as I mentioned, a couple of teams, but they are underway in earnest. And what Nelly Korda is doing is something that is incredibly historic. And I want to get into what it means in terms of the current flow and ebb of the LPGA Tour. Hold hold on that because Don was doing some crunching that I think is really significant. As to Corda's 12th victory on tour and fourth win in consecutive starts uh, this season, she becomes the first player to win in four consecutive starts in the LPGA Tour since Lorena Ochoa did it back in 2008. She becomes the second player in LPGA Tour history to enter a major coming off four wins in consecutive starts since Annika Sorenstam in 2004-2005. Get this, she becomes the first American to win four consecutive starts in the LPGA Tour since Nancy Lopez won five consecutive starts in, wait for it, 1978. She becomes the fifth player joining Annika, Lorena, Inby Park in 13, Aria Jutanagar in 16 to win three consecutive schedule events on the PGA Tour. She becomes the first American since Kathy Whitworth, ready? In 1969 to win four of her first five starts this season. She becomes the 31st American to earn at least 12 victories in her career. This is her second win since returning to Rolex rankings world number one position. Incredible. She won $300,000 for the winner's check. She surpassed 1 million mark for the season, 10 million mark for her career. She ties Lorena Ochoa as the fastest to reach a, a million dollars in a single season earnings. Lorena did it in 2008, which is incredible because back then I think they were the purses were uh, like $100. Since her rookie season in 2017, she crossed the $1 million mark in six seasons. I mean, it's clear that the, se- that the purses are too low. I know people are going to go crazy in social media when I say that, but they are. It's her eighth season on the LPGA Tour. She's made 115 cuts and 132 starts. She is a defending gold medalist from the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. She's a three-time member of the U.S. Solheim Cup team, 1921-23. She presented the United States in the 23 Hanwha Life Plus International Crown. She won the Ladies European Tour uh, events three times. Most recently, she claimed the individual title at the Aramco Team Series London. That was in 2023. Absolutely incredible what she accomplished. Now, get this before we hear from, and you're going to uh, here in just a moment. This is what I'm getting to with the numbers that Dom was crunching for us. Only 48 women 
have won 12 or more times on tour. 48. Only 44 of those women have won 12 or more times and a major. There are six players, so it represents of that 44, 13.6%. Six players that you see displayed on your TV screen right now if you're with us on the TV side. Now, we're, we're counting these as, as current players, which means they've won in the last few years on the LPGA. Lydia Ko, 20 years old, or 20 wins, 26 years old. All these players right in the heart of their prime. Jin Young Ko, 15 wins, two majors. Yeah, Lydia had, uh, if I said 20 wins, two majors, you can see it on the graphic. Jin Young Ko, 15 wins, two majors. She's only 28. Brooke Henderson. 13 wins, two majors. She's 26. Aria Jutanagarn, who's kind of gone off the boil, right, for, the, for a little bit, but she's still 12 wins, two majors. She's only 28. Nelly Korda, 12 wins, one major, 25. Say Kim, 12 wins, one major, 31. Absolutely incredible. So with that, let's find out what Nelly Korda's feeling and thinking after this most recent win. Gosh, I can't even wrap my head around it, honestly. Um, such a whirlwind of the last three weeks. I just feel like I was just in go mode constantly. So um, it'll be nice to go home to see my whole family. Jess is driving up um, with Grayson, so I'm super excited. But yeah, um, played really well today. Um, just stuck to my game plan of fairways and greens and um, yeah, uh, made the least amount of mistakes. Yeah, I think the third day was actually the toughest day weather-wise that we had. It was blowing really hard, and the weather was really cold as well. So I was thinking I was at two over, so I was thinking that I could possibly get in if I just shoot even. But, um, you know, I started rolling some birdies in on the front nine, and I was like, okay, like, I'm hitting it really well, feeling pretty good. Let's see how, how low I can go. And the back nine just plays a lot harder, I feel like. I feel like there's definitely more opportunities on the front nine when it just comes off the tee and the greens. So, um, yeah, just got it really going on the front nine on the third day and then kind of eased into it on the back nine. Yeah, it's always nice to um, get a lead, kind of like a cushion in a sense, but... It's Leona. Uh, she's such a fiery competitor. I just knew when I lost those two and two holes in a row, 13 and 14, that I really needed to put my foot down to finish the match off. Um, so, you know, it um, it was a kind of an interesting day. Kind of hit, Leona hit some putts that she obviously normally wouldn't, but um, just stayed in my own bubble, really. It's such an honor. Um, Kathy's really good friend actually texted me last week a photo of me just being compared to Kathy on social media. And I wrote her back that it's it's an honor to be alongside her. I used to play in her event growing up, the Kathy Whitworth Invitational in Texas. And meeting her and getting to talk to her was always kind of like the highlight of my year. And she was always so, so nice. So getting compared to Kathy Whitworth is a huge honor. Well, one, I mean, when you drive into the facility, it just doesn't even feel like you're in Vegas. Um, it's absolutely breathtaking. Uh, such an amazing, amazing golf course. It is brutal, though. It is so hard. It has tested every part of my game, and I appreciate that. I, I think that golf courses like that are so much fun to play they're so frustrating where you're just like you walk off the hole and like you're just so frustrated there's a couple swear words going through your head but um I would say that it almost played like all the majors combined and they tested our game this week and um yeah it's been a lot of fun how do I define the word excellence I don't know, just showing up every day and being your true self, um, going out and giving 100% um, every single day and um, being consistent, being true to yourself. Um, that even when I'm really, really low on energy and everything that, you know, if I go out, do my thing, stay committed, stay in my, stay in my own bubble, I can compete well at a good level. 
Yeah, I'm feeling, honestly, I'm actually feeling really good. I don't know if it's going to hit me when I get home. Um, but I feel, I feel really good. Like, thankfully, you know, I have a lot of consistency in my life. I see the same people every single day. I do the same stuff every single day. And I try to stay in my own little bubble. And I feel like mentally that's the best thing that you can do for your mental health is kind of stay in a routine. I just love competing. I love golf. I hopefully, you know, I'm inspiring the next generation, but there's no greater thrill for me than competing and being out here and seeing the girls and going head to head for a title. I mean, there's no greater feeling and I I have to say I just I just love the sport so much and I just love competing. Rita, oh my gosh! So I um, I went to Paris ba Baguette, I think is that what it's called, and I got yep. so much stuff <laughs> for the whole team and I, not just for me, okay. And then I think we're gonna go get In and Out burgers and Five Guys fries. Yeah, just no free great, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great combination. I feel like that's just an elite combination. It's just like, I don't do, I don't go and celebrate, I don't drink, so I'm just carb loading. <laughs> that was the best part of her interview. I love the end. Nelly, carb loading, showed us her personality. Because a lot of times when she comes in, especially at this run that she's on, she's tired. She's at the end of a, you know, grueling week. And in her case, it's been a, it's been a run, but I'm hoping that she'll get some, some rest in this in this week off, but she has kind of, I mean, Dom, correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Nelly sound a little bit like Valley girl, a little bit like, uh, I finished and I was really tired. I couldn't believe it. The ball was so crowded. Um, play, play just the start of her, play just the start of her presser for me, Andrew, just the start of it. I was like, Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Because... Gosh, I can't even wrap my head around it. Honestly. Yeah. That's all uh, I need to hear. Thank you very much. All right. She can't even, I don't even know what I got. To do. I think she's great. I think she's absolutely awesome. All right. Um, so what do you have for your question of the day? I'm sure it's something Nelly Corder related. Go ahead. It's not Nelly Corder related, oh, uh, for the record. It is, who would you put your money on at the Masters? I'm giving you two options here, Matt. Okay. Rom, Brooks, and Scheffler, or the field. Andrew, Andrew spent so much time on this. Andrew, put up the field. Put up the Masters field graphic. Ah, there she is. That is every player. In the 2024 Masters, including Akshay Bhatia, which we're going to get to, just he's in at the last minute there, but that is everyone in the field. So I'm saying, Matt, and we'll, we'll show some odds later to give people some more context, but if I'm giving you $20 and I say you can put it on John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, or Scotty Scheffler, all three of them as a combo, or the entire rest of that field that is on your screen, who are you taking? Okay, so uh, Andrew, go ahead and put the odds up there. Let's talk about that as we're as we're answering this question. Rom, Brooks, or Scheffler. So you've got the defending champion. You've got the guy that won just before that, and you got the guy that finished second last year. You can see the odds right now. Twelve to one for for John Rom. Obviously, Scotty's at the top. Brooks is sixteen to one. Wow, that is actually a very, very tough question. If you guys want to weigh in on the question of the day, log on to the Fairways of Life YouTube channel, the Fairways of Life YouTube channel, and you could answer right there. Normally, Dom, I never take the player over the field. But you've given me three players and blanketed. You've given me John Rahm, who Trip Eisenhower told us last week is going to be coming in with a chip. You've given us Brooks, who is a major machine, and he's been in the mix multiple times at the Masters before. And you've got Scotty Scheffler, who's playing in a Scotty Scheffler sort of way and seemingly has the putting at least worked out. I'm not saying that it's completely fixed, if that's even possible, when a, when a put person either is a great putter or they, they aren't, in my mind, but you can work around it. Uh, so all he needs to do is get to at least average to slightly above average. He's coming in 99th in strokes gained putting uh, this week. But remember, that's well, if you look at if you look season. at those odds, Matt, I took some liberties there. I kind of screwed over Rory and Xander Shoffley if you're looking at those odds. So Rory and Xander, whose odds are, you know, equal or better than Brooks Kepka, 
I left them in the field group amongst the rest of the players. Yeah, I get so that. I, I mean, I, I get I, that. And I purposely picked Brooks because I think he's a – I mean, I, I feel like we could do five shows just on him and his mindset. I'd love to talk to a, a pile of sports psychologists No, no, I understand. I, I got I, what you're saying. Just, and and, and, and I don't have a breed. problem with – because Rory's coming in with a tremendous amount of weight, right? Rory has a good final round. And everybody's like, uh, he finished. He finished uh, yesterday, uh, you know, with with a sixty six, and uh, he's and which looked like looked like it was going to be maybe the the round of the day until Denny McCarthy shoots a sixty three, and all of a sudden everyone's like, Rory's going to win the career Grand Slam, but he's coming in with a tremendous amount of weight. When you're talking about that, was Xander Shoffley? Xander's his his primary key performance statistics in 2024 have all gone the other direction. Is he capable of it? Of course he is. There's a lot of players we could talk about in terms of capability of it. Uh, So I'm actually going to take, me personally, Ron Brooks and Scheffler, I'm going to take one of those three winning the Masters over the field. What about you? Um, I'm going to take Ron Brooks and Scheffler because if you recall last week when we made our Masters picks, I picked Brooks Kepka to win the Masters. So I am taking that right now, by the way, still sort of early in the voting. It's only been about 10 minutes since we've been on the air, but it's 50-50 right now. All right. so Which if you think about it, Matt, that's insane. 50% of the people, 52% now are already saying, you know what? We'll take one of these three players over the whole field. Which includes Rory. No, 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 that's not your question. They're not taking one of those three players over the field. They're taking all three of those players over the field. That's what changes the question. You're like, I'm going to take Brooks. I I think you're going to take Brooks over the entire field. Brooks over the field. Yes or no? Yes. But yes, I stand by that. But here's my here's my thing. I don't know nothing. I'm not a mathematician. Okay. I cannot stress news. this enough. That is just... I cannot stress that enough. But with that as with with that as a baseline, that I am not a mathematician. <laughs> I am not an animal. I I don't understand the math, but I would imagine the math heavily, heavily favors the field, even in this situation when you're grouping those players together. You you built up that huge. I'm not a mathematician to, to throw out a. Celebration of the obvious like that? Okay. Yeah, but you and I are both picking that group. We're both picking that group. Zip it, zip and then 50% of the people it, are saying it's the group. It. The Fairways of Life show is presented by the PGA Tour Superstore. They just opened a new one in Florida this past weekend. That marked them as how many? 68 big, beautiful stores spread out from coast to coast. If you swing it, if you wear it, if you need to learn from it or of it, you could find it at the PGA Tour Superstore where you are shopping with the pros at your happy place. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. The PGA Tour Superstore. It's all in the hips. Where every swing is possible. Just tap it in. Yes! (laughs) Find all the latest gear, apparel, and personalized club fittings. Is this goodbye? We've only just begun. Shop with the pros at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. Ben Hogan Golf Equipment is back. Established in 1953, we serve golfers who demand excellence of their equipment. Designed by the game's best engineers, forged in the world's best foundries, and built to order in the USA. Don't settle for off-the-rack disappointment. Elevate your game with custom clubs at direct consumer pricing. Exclusively at BenHoganGolf.com. That's BenHoganGolf.com.
The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team, the absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're gonna love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball, nah. Football, got it. I think I'm gonna go after the PGA Tour. Playing on the PGA Tour is not easy. But you know what is easy? Getting the 524 Series from Tour Edge. Getting linebackers and home runs used to be easy. Out here, you're gonna need all the easy you can get. Introducing the 524 Series from Tour Edge. The easiest clubs you'll ever hit. Even the best players in the world can use a little easy. I like the sound of that. Look out, PGA Tour. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship-caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. Welcome back to the Fairways of Life show, folks. Pleasure to have you here on Company Monday Masters. We will get into it. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what happened in Miami. I sent Dom a picture of it yesterday. I, I know, Dom, you were watching basketball exclusively. We were. Dom's been in my house. I, I, it, I think the key to domestic tranquility is we have two TVs in the family room. We got the we got the big one, which I think is like fifty five inches. So I, mean, I know they're much bigger than that, but we got we got a small family room. But I got that one like uh, on on top of a table, and the other one's above a fireplace. And so we had the big one on the basketball game, which is was which very impressive. Hey, do they have ratings for that yet, Dom? Have you heard? Are you asking me about ratings for the semifinal between UConn and Iowa? Are you asking? No, no, me not the one. It was like twelve point nine million. I'm talking about the national championship yesterday. Do we? Did we? Do we have ratings for that yet? Because it's got to be huge. I don't know. Give me a second. I know that the numbers for the uh, the semifinal were like twelve point beyond record breaking. Yeah, okay, like insane so, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening. Okay, so I had the two TVs going with the basketball game. Then the basketball game ended. I, I had I had the hoop game on the left one. I had lived Miami above the fireplace, and then, and then hoop game ended, and I went to the final throws of Valero, and in between that on the TVs, I'm shooting over watching the Sox play. Earlier, I had I was actually got out yesterday, but we had, um, you know, you got your TV, you got your TV. I had it, I was watching Liverpool. Manchester United on Earl. I just thought it was amazing. I just all the stuff that was going on was was absolutely fantastic. So, bottom line, Akshay Batia wins for the second time. Birdie four on uh, the first playoff hole. I, I guess he I guess he blew his shoulder out of socket by fist bumping. Who did he fist bump? What, uh, what happened? What did you get the details of that time? Uh no he he I I mean blow his shoulder out is a bit of a stretch he uh, not, no, he knocked it out told, of socket that's what he said what we're being told is on the on the fist pump when in regulation when he made the birdie putt to to stay in the playoff or to to enter a playoff with Denny McCarthy he fist pump remember he's a lefty he fist pumped with his left arm and when he did this apparently it popped out of socket and went back in. I don't know what the medical terminology is for that, but it's not like it came out and stayed out. It just popped out and in and sort of irritated, I don't know, whatever the ligaments are there. And so he called for a trainer, which you can do, and he got taped up but like before he hit his wedge shot in the playoff, which I – I don't. do you know what the specific rules are about that? Because I was trying to research it during the round. I think it's interesting that you're allowed to get treatment in the middle of a hole versus in between holes. I know where you're going with this. So you're you're like you're like, hey, if I feel like calling a timeout, I'm just gonna do an old yeah. Ooh, yeah. My arm. I, I, I was think it's I was confused about the actual letter of the law with the rules there. Here's the I bigger that thing. Was very interesting because if here's a bigger thing though, Dom. 
does that into the age-old argument about whether golfers are or are not athletes? Right? Andrew's I mean, laughing at me as I as I, I pose don't want to start this right now. I, I don't want to start this argument right Dude now. Dude threw his shoulder out with a fist pump. Yeah, now, not, maybe not there was great. something going on there look. previously. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Maybe there was something going on there previously. I like Akshay. Not, not the best. Not the best. 16th playoff at the Valero Texas Open. First since uh, the event moved to TPC San Antonio. That was in 2010. Prior to yesterday, the last playoff of the event was won by Zach Johnson, 2009. Fourth playoff on the tour this season. Playoff records. Akshay is 2-0. McCarthy is 0-2. As to Akshay, let's start there. Picks up his second PGA Tour victory in his 54 start. He is at the ripe old age of 22 years, two months and seven days. Both wins have come in playoffs. I do think they, they should do a little working out on the shoulder. A 2023 Barracuda Championship and the 2024 Valero Texas Open. Was the number 12 in FedEx Cup standings, and now he's fully exempt through the 2026 PGA Tour season. He earned a spot, of course, into the Masters, an entry into the four remaining signature events this season. He becomes the first drive, chip, and putt participant to play in the Masters he participated in the inaugural drive, chip, and putt national finals in 2014, finishing sixth place overall in the boys' 12 to 13 age group. By the way, Dom, were you guys watching that like mad yesterday? I was watching that too. I was trying to watch everything, but I don't have all, all the TVs Matt has in his house, so I can only do so much. I have two, but so have uh, thank you for, for illustrating the excess. Um, well, I have so, one and two kids, which take away from me being able to I'm asking watch you like because half of one. You're, are you trying to tell me that your son wasn't watching Drive, Chip, and Putt at Augusta National? No, he had a golf tournament yesterday. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> so that explains that. There you go. All right. Despite holding the overnight Sorry lead after their first three rounds and a share of the lead at the end of regulation, the victory isn't considered an official wire-to-wire win since it went to a playoff. Wins in first attempt, the 54-hole co-lead and third lead at the event. And they list him first left-hander to win the Valero Texas Open since Eric Axley in 2006. Wow. First left-hander to win on tour since uh, the Barracuda Championship and Brian Harmon at the Open. Did the same. That was July for Brian, obviously, in 2023. 268 aggregate equals the lowest 72-hole score since the event moved to TPC San Antonio. Records his first top 10 finish in his 10th start of the season, but he was tied for 11th last week, so it wasn't like he wasn't playing well. Led the field T to green, strokes gain, 18.78. Are you kidding me? Strokes gain approach to green, he was 8.22. All right, first off, let's hear from Akshay. Yeah, I mean, Denny played unbelievable. Uh, you know, coming off nine, <clears throat> had a great up and down six shot lead, nine holes play. You're like, okay, let's see how big this lead can get. And then, you know, he makes a 20 footer from off the green. I three putt from off the green birdie the next he pars. So now, okay, we're back to five. And, uh, you know, from there it was just unbelievable how good he hit it. Uh, the putts he made, I mean, that guy has some guts and, you know, he's going to win a lot of times out here. Um, but I did tell him, you know, in scoring, I was like, hey, man, like, you're in Augusta already. Like, come on, just let me, you know, let me go. But, no, for real, it was it was awesome what, what Denny did. And that's kind of <clears> – <throat> it was a really good feeling kind of making that putt on 18 in regulation uh, when he made. And, uh, you know, just fortunate to, to hit a couple good shots uh, on 18 in, in the playoff and get it done. <sighs> Probably not yet. I mean, it's so fresh and um, – you know, this place is very special to me. Uh, I know it's special to Presley, and, and uh, you know, they've always been very, very, um, very gracious towards me, giving me a couple spots, uh, sponsor exemptions. And, um, yeah, I just can't wait to be back here. This golf course is awesome. It's hard, stressful, um, and you just feel like you never are safe. So it was awesome. Yeah, I wrote uh, WTW, so wire to wire was kind of the, the motto for the day. And, um, you know, it was more so just visualizing that, that string uh, from the first hole uh, to the semi-second hole and just seeing that string and, and know I'm on the right path. And uh, I did a great job this week. I, I played some phenomenal golf, um, and I learned a lot about myself last week, and I think it carried over to this week. Yeah, I, I've learned a lot uh, being in contention a couple times. Barracuda was a weird one. You know, I've, I felt like 
I don't know if I was ready to win. Uh, my caddy had a ton of belief in me. And then Century, you know, I, I remember getting on that first tee uh, and just not having a clear picture on that first tee shot, make double, kind of throw myself out of the tournament. And then last week, you know, I, I got that, I held the lead uh, with <clears throat> 10 holes to go. And I learned a lot about myself, you know, six shots that I wish I would have backed off of. And I, you know, would have probably had a better chance of winning a golf tournament. Um, so I took that into consideration this week. Uh, I've had two different caddies the last two weeks. So it's pretty crazy. You know, you just kind of have a little more belief like, you know, JMO did a great job this week. Cook did a great job last week. But at the end of the day, like, you know how good you are, uh, the belief you have in yourself. And uh, I think the uh, adversity, you know, that's kind of what we sign up for. So it was, it was awesome to kind of get that win. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I played Augusta in uh, 2020, maybe. Uh, I had a member take me out. I remember how amazing that place is. But to realize that I'm playing in the Masters next week, um, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And uh, it was on my mind all week, but, you know, I try to stick to my game plan. And um, I have bigger goals than just playing the Masters. I have more goals that I want to achieve. And, uh, you know, this kind of helps me uh, for that. I mean, I played great today. I shot five under on a tough golf course. Denny just played. <laughs> it was one of those rounds you just, that happens. And, um, you know, I didn't feel helpless. I was hitting the right shots. I was leaving myself in good spots. And, um, you know, I had a goal to shoot four under today. I thought, you know, if I could shoot four, it's going to be really tough to kind of catch me. Um, and I was doing great. I started off great. And the shots in regulation, 18s, I don't love the tee shot, you know. There's trouble right for me if I overcut it. It's in the rough, or it could go way left into the trees. And, um, you know, with the wind direction changing, um, you know, I, that ball stayed in the first cut. I had a pretty nice, good second shot. That second shot's not easy at all. And then the wedge shot was great. You know, it's tough. You have, you can't really feel your arms, your hands, your mind's racing. And trying to hit a soft 54 from 106 yards is, it's pretty tough, but I've done it, you know, before at Barracuda, I had the same feelings. And then kind of going into the playoff, I felt like myself, like calm. I was, ha you know, I was just happy to have the opportunity to, to win the golf tournament. And, uh, you know, I just never thought that Denny would, would let go. And, you know, I thought I had to do something pretty spectacular to, to kind of close it off. What was the last thing you thought or told yourself before you made the stroke to win? Uh, I told myself out loud, come on, Akshay, let's freaking go. Similar putt to what I had at Barracuda, downhill left to right. Um, and, you know, him making it, you know what you need to do. But, like I said, I kind of just told myself, let's freaking go. Like, this is this is kind of your moment. And you miss it, okay, you finish second. But I, I just had that feeling that, you know, I can do it. And um, it's a good feeling to have because, you know, some people can kind of shy away from the moment. And I feel like I'm starting to get better at, at you know, embracing it. Yeah, so when I made the putt in regulation, I raised my arm and I put it in a kind of uncomfortable spot, kind of dislocated, came back in. And uh, it's happened before. I, I had this happen uh, from pickleball and then uh, I had it happen in Bermuda, but it's just going to feel a little loose. You know, my, my physio will take care of me, so I'm not too, too concerned, but it's definitely a little uncomfortable right now. Augusta National is obviously very special. Um, I think it's one week out of the year that everyone, you know, wants to be there, checks it off. And as a kid going there for the first time uh, in the inaugural drive trim putt is pretty special. Something I'll always remember wearing those baggy pants, making that putt on 18, uh, just looking like a goofball. And I, I can't wait to, to go back. And I was watching a little bit today, uh, seeing these kids, you know, hit, hit on the range, have people watch. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And just see, even seeing some players, uh, you feel kind of like, you know, a pinch me moment. I'm telling you what, I am a huge fan of Akshay. Why don't you like him, Dom? I, th I, think, I think he's like a perfect guy to be a, a, a fan of. I never said that. Yeah, I think he's a great guy to be a fan of. I mean, these young guys, he's very young. He's 22, right, Andrew? 22. Put that graphic. It changed. Put the graphic up with the number of wins and whatever. This is his second win, but he also won on the Corn Ferry Tour, and he's still only 22 years old. I do think the I know we were, I, I think some people are poo-pooing it, but I think it's interesting that he's the first 
drive, chip, and putt contestant to get the play in the Masters. I think that's that's an extraordinary feat. It also shows the 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 youth, like the path that the youth are taking now in golf, with the 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 options that they have available when they're five, six, eight, ten years old, and and the t- trajectory they're on is is. It's working. It's the right. It's the right path. It's the right trajectory. Right, right. Because you've got guys like him who are getting, they're playing their way all the way into the. So why are you avoiding that. the question? There's something about him that you're not willing to say. I'm a huge fan. Why? Is it because he has the black I, glasses and you have the, the clear one? No, no, no. I do have some clear glasses. Yeah, Andrew. What do you think? We, you think we have the same glasses? We don't have the same glasses. They look the exact Andrew's same. No, come on now. Mine are, what, mine are clear. His are black. It's very different. No, I mean, you know, style. You were trying to tell me this is a style. Yes, the style. Yeah, I think the style is clear. I will say, without question, I am jealous of his hair. He's got hair all over the place. There's something I, I don't, going I, on I, with you and him. I don't know what it is because I've been telling, uh, like, months. I'm like, Akshay Batia is going to be a big, big star. He's got crazy good game, and you're always like, meh, meh. His glasses I don't know. I don't see. I don't see the jugger. I don't see when I look Come at on. him. Right. Go ahead. He's well, on the edge of telling us. Come on. Listen to me. Listen to me. Can I talk? Let me Come talk. on. If okay. you got to tell us the truth and not when try I, to beat around well, the bush. No, it's not about the truth. When I'm looking at a yep. future superstore, when we're having discussions about guys who are between 18 and 24, and they're going to be the next big thing, right? Yeah. I do. I envision that person as a juggernaut, a Brooks Kepka winning a bunch of majors. And I, I don't see that with him. So that's why that's where that that's where that's coming from. When you say, "Oh, you're not a big fan," I am that. a big fan, I but I don't see that. I I'm don't see that. him winning a pile of majors. Do you think Akshay Bati is cocky? Say it. I do. Say it. Yeah, I knew it. I do. I knew it. But I but it. but but I think most players in the top thirty on the PGA Tour. You can put that in, Andrew. Would be considered cocky. I think you have to be that. You have to be cocky if you're going to be. No, I believe win a PGA that. You know, tournament. I believe that. But you were, you hear from him, and you're kind of like, uh, who is he? He's 22. Well, I think he's 22. He can see clearly now with the round glasses, like you, and he's already won twice on the PGA Tour, both times in playoffs. And aside from the little snafu with the shoulder, which I realize doesn't show great for, for golf. But. No, it doesn't show great. <laughs> I need to look into that. I need to look into that rule closer and find out what the fine details are about that, that stupid rule. So as to Denny Ooh, McCarthy arm. seeking his broke first. <laughs> oh, my arm. I think I broke it. I need a, I need a timeout. His first PGA Tour victory in his 174th start finished runner up the second time. They were both playoff losses, incidentally. The other one was to uh, Victor Hovland at the 2023 Memorial Tournament. He set the back nine score in RC San Antonio with an eight under 28. You heard me correctly. Fourth 28 this season and first since Eric Van Royen at the Cognizant Classic with the greatest mustache in the game, Palm Beaches. He closed his round with seven consecutive birdies, holes 12 through 18. Last player to birdie the final seven holes of regulation and go on to win, of course, was Kevin Strillman at the Travelers Championship. That was back in 24, no, uh, 2014, I beg your pardon. Previous best birdie streak was six in a row to 21 uh, Butterfield Bermuda Classic. 92 putts equals the lowest, fewest, I should say, probably to use their terminology, on tour since 1983 when they started keeping records. Unbelievable. That marks his first top 10 finish on tour since the 23 RSM Classic where he was tied for fifth. Uh, This is, I mean, when I tell you he led in the strokes gained putting, you're all like rolling your eyes. Of course he did. He led in strokes gained uh, around the green at 7.9. Sand saves four for four, scrambling 25 of 29. That's where I was going. Let's hear from him. Yeah, it was an amazing day. Um, Obviously, it was, I got off to a little bit of a slow start. Akshay birdied, you know, what was it, four of the first five or four of the first six, something like that. Um, I missed some early opportunities. I didn't really put much pressure on him early. Um, and then, you know, I just 
was trying to stack shots together. I was just trying to kind of continue what I have been doing all week um, and, and, you know, just strung together a lot of really good shots, a lot of good putts. Um, they were falling. Um, you know, I kind of just got in my own little world out there, got in the zone and um, was able to put a little pressure on him on the back. He, he played great. I mean, he shot five under today with the lead. Um, he, count, he came out aggressive, swinging with driver. He drove the ball great. Um, wish I could have had that wedge shot back there. I backed off a couple times. There was a bug on my ball and some noise in the stands and a bug jumped back on my ball. I probably should have backed away again, but I thought I could kind of just not let it distract me and maybe it did a little. Um, so, you know, learn, maybe a learning experience for me, um, but all in all, I handled myself really well today. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is. Um, yeah, I mean, it's there's there's a lot of things, you know, it was slow all week, the pace of play. It was just, it's that kind of a golf course. It's a tricky golf course with a lot of trouble. Um, so there is some, there is some weights, but I was used to, that happened on all three days. So I was able to kind of just stay patient and, um, you know, Brendan Todd's a good buddy of mine. So just talking to him, my caddy a little bit. And um, like I said, just kind of, just kind of hitting the, sh hitting the shot, sticking to my process, hitting the shot and moving on and keep doing that. And, you know, the putter felt great in my hands all week. Obviously, it felt great in my hands again today. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a great day. It really sucks that it had to end like that. Um, but, you know, just got to move forward. Yeah. Try and I, I feel like I'm playing well enough to, you know, win the tournament. Obviously, you get in the, the heat of the battle there. It might be a little bit different kind of pressure pressure that I've maybe never experienced but I'd like to put myself there and see what it's like um, I think this week was a good you know a good test for that um, and you know you know I, I really like how I handled myself um, physically and mentally this week um, and I love that golf course I've played it you know four or five times over the last month and a half and um, you know I've gotten I feel like I've gotten some good prep work in so I'm excited to play it Absolutely unbelievable uh, what Denny did. I'm sure he's knocking on the door and he'll come through. I mean, at the end there, I do think he, it, with that shot, he got consumed by the moment. And that's why he went. All right, Don, before we take a break and, and a break. you continue to fester your hatred, um, what, what is hatred. going on with the question of the day? 53% now are saying they would take Rob Brooks and Scheffler as a group. Remember, I gave you guys $20 for this. A fake twenty dollars, <laughs> and would you take that group or would you take the field? And right now it's fifty three forty seven. Again, I'm not a mathematician, but statistically, I feel like it's in the favor of the field by a pretty wide margin. And yet, both you and me and everybody are saying Ron Brooks and Sheffield. Everybody, fifty two percent. I thought you just said fifty three percent. Yeah, clearly you're not a math, math guy. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, statistically, I would think it's vastly in favor of the field, right? Yes. So that's interesting. I guess that speaks to how well those guys play in majors and how well they're playing now, right? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what it feels did, uh, kind Andrew, of like old times. People shocked. Because back in the day, it was Tiger versus the doctor. field. What did I say negative? What? Akshay, the, I, the people are saying? supporting you, Andrew's giving me the indication with your negativity towards Akshay. It's not Akshay. Oh, let me say this. I will say this. All right, here we go. Here we go. Finally, he's coming clean. I'm going to start a firestorm, and I don't have a ton of stats to back this up. Okay? More math. I don't like the long putter. I think it's stupid. I think it looks stupid. I don't like it. I want nothing to do with it, and it shouldn't be allowed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When we come back, we're going to take you down to Miami. Let's talk about what happened at Live Golf. Uh, more coming up in the Fairways of Life show. I got ball fit in 2000. Went on a little run. Then Bridgestone fit me again, and I went on another run. I just got fit again for the new Tour BX. The ball fitting's been helping me. Will it help you? 
Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more. Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to BoyneGolf.com. I think when you're training for other sports or you're, what, why most people go to the gym is so that they can like have muscles and you know be strong and be healthy. And a lot of the reason why they struggle to play golf is their body doesn't move properly for them to be able to hit a golf ball. And when you're training for golf, it's a little bit different because you're focused more on flexibility and mobility and being uh, strong in motion. When you're able to kind of have a warm up and have a workout routine and kind of gradually build up to where you're training your body to move properly, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of big dividends on the golf course. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. The PGA Tour Superstore. It's all in the hips. Where every swing is possible. Just tap it in. Yes! <laughs> Find all the latest gear, apparel, and personalized club fittings. Is this goodbye? We've only just begun. Shop with the pros at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. What if we started a company and the company was under no time constraints, no financial constraints? The one constraint is their clubs had to be exceptional performers and much better than any other alternative. I was told time and again, it'll never work. It worked like a house of fire. And I'll tell you what, I think our customers love it. BXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Stride by Zero Friction, the first of its kind personal caddy. Walk in comfort and style with Stride's remote and follow me technology. The Stride handles almost any terrain and its 54 hole range will last all day. The lightweight design and removable front wheels makes it simple to handle. Plus it easily fits golf carts. Pick up your Stride today at a local PGA Tour Superstore near you or at zerofriction.com backslash Stride. Stride, your personal caddy. Welcome back to Fairways of Life Show. We're in the break and Dom's yelling at me. Attacking me. Attacking my credibility. I'm not yelling. He's saying You're to me. You're having a pleasant you're... producer host discussion. No. You attacked me and said, you agree with me and you're, I forget what you said, reticent or refused to say <laughs> that you're against the long putter. I'm like, dude, I spoke out publicly against the banning. The anchor ban. I don't remember that. Who My feeling, that, that was you were producing ago. the show. My feeling is that if the long putter makes that big a difference, then why isn't everybody using it? If it works for people, fine. They're not allowed to anchor. So adjust around the rule, and if it works for you, why do I care? Why do I care how someone grips the putter if it's within the confines of whatever the rules are of the competition and competing, who cares? Do your thing. Where I was, the reason I was against the anchor side was because I didn't care what they did on the pro side because I, the pros will figure it out, right? But I knew a lot of senior golfers as coming from the green grass side, right? I came from the club side. Last place I ran was up in um, Rhode Island. And we had a lot of senior golfers that couldn't shake the ball in the hole without being able to hold it to their chest as a fulcrum point and use the long putter. And when, when the game, and we're going through kind of a similar thing with the, with the discussion of a rollback of technology affecting the golf ball. When the game, the, the, the reasons we were given were that it, it was an optics thing, and at the time, there were multiple major, reigning major champions that were using the long putter, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, okay, so every time golf's governing bodies are really concerned about the direction that golf is going, and this is a piece of equipment that it was impacting, right? It was because of the anchor. The equipment still exists, in fairness. But at the time, that was a discussion. It's always about what the top of 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 the pyramid are doing. Okay. Then why do we have to stick to this antiquated belief that 
what the top tour pros do in any way relates to what everybody else does in the game. You know what I'm talking about. Breakfast ball on the first tee. Dom rolls it out of the, you know, the divot in the fairway. Uh, that, that could pick it up. I, I can go on and on and on and on and on. Dom. You could have just said anything there. You said Dom. <laughs> By the way, for the record, for the record, the last time I played golf, I did hit a ball in the fairway that landed in a divot. And I didn't say one word about it. And my playing partner, who I happened to be playing with, said, hey, why don't you take it out of that divot? And I said, uh, okay, I will. <laughs> I thought that story was going to have nobility. I thought for sure he was, gonna, he was giving us the finger. I thought he was going to say, finger in the air, I was in a divot, and I didn't touch the ball. I played it out of the it, – ultimately, he said he took it out because – And that, his, that shot was the difference between whether or not I'm going to play pro. <laughs> that's correct. That's so stupid. But what I'm saying is and, – and, even though I was going to tell Dom to not make it all about him, what I was going to say was that there's just two completely separate and distinct worlds. So I just, it, that's the part that I don't get. Why hurt the guy that's, that's out there paying to play golf? Right? I just don't get it. I, that, that's the part that bothers me, and, it, and that's what bothered me about that rule then. But as far as people using it now and using it with different grip, as long as it's within the current rules, I don't care. Use whatever you, whatever you feel is going to help you get the ball in the hole is, is fine by me. Uh, Sergio Garcia came into the day with a two-shot lead down in Miami. He was eventually caught, actually, by multiple players. At one point uh, on the back nine, five players, Burmester, Luis Hazen, Garcia, Terrell Hatton and Matthew Wolf all shared the lead. Burmester grabbed the solo lead with a birdie at the drivable 16th, but bogey the difficult par for 18th, as you probably saw, after an Aaron drive. Meanwhile, Garcia, who was in those, those trees over there. Meanwhile, Garcia grabbed the lead with a 40-foot birdie putt at 17, but he three-putted the 18th to fall back into a tie. That forced the playoff. Matchy pars the first playoff hole. Garcia then, of course, found the water in his approach shot on 18th. Burmester safely landed on the green. He two-putted for par from there to win. Afterwards, Dean had this to say about what he accomplished. Rolex. Man, it was a long day. This is a, this is a tough golf course. But I think, you know, getting paired up with Louis helped me a lot. Kind of kept me calm, you know. It didn't help. He kept draining all those putts, though. I was kind of doing my own thing, and then he just made putt after putt. But... I thought we were going to have a good battle, kind of stinger against stinger, and yeah, unfortunately it didn't go his way. But man, it was a, a special day, certainly one I won't forget. You know, I was I was a little disappointed. I I knew 18 was playing tough, um, but yeah, I was I was more disappointed in my first effort um, in regulation play for par. That wasn't my best effort, was it? But I was proud of the way I knocked the next one in, and you know, I played great all day. I didn't make a bogey until that hole, and you know, hung around and. I heard Sergio made a long putt. I mean, I had a cameraman. Do you want to know what Sergio did? Do you want to know? I said, no, I don't want to know what he did. <laughs> so, you know, just chipped it out. And But, yeah, I, w I went to the putting green. My teammates, that's where it's super special. That's what makes it special is Brandon and Charles and Louis are like, it's not over yet. He's hit it to like 60 feet. It's not over yet. Go hit some putts. So, yeah, I just went with my family, and we all walked down onto the putting green, and I hit a couple putts. And, and then, obviously, he missed it, and, it was like a little sense of calm kind of came over me, and I was, I was ready to get business done. It was cool. Yeah, it's special because, you know, coming over, obviously I was, I was coming over to three friends, and um, I was excited about that. But I also wanted to prove myself against a lot of the best players in the world, you know, a lot of major champions. And, um, yeah, now that I've done that, you know, a year and a half in, I'm super, super stoked, and I'm proud of myself, and now we're going to try and do it again. Afterwards, when I had that four-footer, I wasn't even – nervous you know because we play enough money games and matches to know that i've got to make those four footers so i just stood over there and i said it's like any other tuesday and knocked it right in the middle and um yeah when they came with the champagne it was it was pretty special louis got me right in the face which i think was his goal so <laughs> yeah but it, it's special to have you know three great friends like that in the green and my family and my kids and their families and the whole stinger crew was here this week so it it's super special to win when everyone's here 
All right, Legion 13 was led by John Rahm's three under 69. Caleb Surratt at uh, 70. Hatton at 71. Vincent at a 77. He finished at one over for the day and 22 for the week. I thought he was going to cost them their chance, but ultimately he didn't. They were in command for a large part of the day until Hatton started struggling off the tee. Vincent hit that patch with four consecutive bogeys. John Rahm, though, led the way, held it together. Here they are after the win. You know, as far as my, my week goes, I think today was the day I, I struck the ball the best. Uh, made a couple putts and gave myself a lot of good chances. Uh, I think the, what could have made this round even more incredible is if, you know, after the tee shot, 2011, 12, and 1, those three holes, to play them two over par is, is what I think cost me even having a chance to, to win it individually. Uh, especially down the stretch. I birdie 18, give us a, a nice little four-shot cushion, smash it down the first fairway and shank it in the water. That was um, that was not what I had in mind. Uh, but, you know, it was fun. It's fun to, when even if you don't have a chance to win it as, a, as an individual going down the stretch, still feel the same nerves that you would, right? I mean, we're going, I was, I'm going down the second fairway with a one or two-shot lead. It's, uh, make that second shot and putt a lot harder. Uh, I'm just thanking God that that ball kept rolling and that I find in the hole. Well, I, I guess that we, so so far we've done well on on challenging golf courses. Um, I think more importantly this week though was to bounce back after how we finished last in Hong Kong. I think that was we were all pretty sad about that. So um, yeah, to come back out next event and and win as a team was. It's great, and yeah, now we look forward to Adelaide. I'd say so. Um, and the best part for us is that, you know, I, I don't think either of us has played even, you know, what I would say their best golf uh, for a whole week. I feel like uh, all of us have had some rounds where we left quite a few shots out there. And I know, you know, some rounds might not count, but I think... Uh, yeah, I think exactly. Yeah, it's it's a lot of good to look forward to when uh, all of us show up to a tournament when we're all playing B plus or A game because uh, either one of us four is capable of winning individually in any given tournament, and I'm looking forward to that day for that day to happen. Anytime you can go to a challenging, demanding golf course before a major championship, I think it's a really good way to prepare for it. Those greens were they were fast, they they were difficult, and I think. It gets you in the mentality of fighting for every shot, right? So I think it was a great week, and uh, hopefully I can keep doing all the good things I've done this week, next week, and uh, avoid a couple silly mistakes and uh, hopefully go back to back. Um, this is obviously the first major that you're playing since joining Liv. Now you're a bit removed from Scotty Scheffler and Roy McIlroy. Do you feel like there's an extra element to the battle at the Masters next week between the three of you? No. I mean, the Masters is the Masters. I don't think there's any difference whether you play a PGA Tour, Live European Tour, or Sunshine Tour. It really doesn't make a difference. Uh, major's a major. You could have asked me the same question last year with some of the Live players coming in, right? Um, so I wouldn't say there's, uh, there's anything added to it, no. God, be, being a major and, and maybe not playing for your team, I can't, go, I can't, think, I can't tell you that I'm thinking about you know, the players that maybe should be there, shouldn't be there, right? Uh, I think I have enough on my plate going into next week uh, trying to win another one. So uh, it would be a great story if one of us were to do it, right? And be great to support it, but uh, not that it's going to be in my mind, though. No. Uh, Ron, I just wanted to ask, what's your favorite dish going into the Champions Dinner uh, on the menu? Uh, man, we, with all the respect to everybody cooking that week uh, I still have to say my grandma's I hope they can I hope they can get close uh, it probably probably not because in my mind I have it built up to you know obviously whatever grandma and mama's cooking is always going to be better than anybody else's right even though if you follow the recipe to a tea for some reason it always tastes different so uh, that lentils too is, is definitely the highlight for me uh, Dom is Andres cooking for him this, this week uh, tomorrow what what tomorrow? What? He's got he's just what he was just talking about. He's hosting the big meal, the whole thing. Yeah, the master's dinner. What about it? Is he bringing in the celebrity chef? 
Yes, Jose Andreas is going to be cooking. Yeah, the the famed chef. And he's I, – I, I, Andrew, I don't think we still have a picture of the menu that he has. Do we still have that somewhere? I don't remember at all, but obviously it's, uh, you know, a bunch of Spanish food. And some of it's like his grandmother's something, something. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, so he's got some awesome. old – yeah, some old recipe from his family that's going to be part of it as well. Do you still but, have Jose Andreas – when he was, he was on with his – you should you – should. Get in touch with him. We'll bring him on this week. Talk about what it's like hanging out at the Augusta National, hanging out at the Masters and doing the whole thing. I mean, if we were going to do that, we should do it after he does it, not before. But I understand what you're saying. <laughs> all right. I'm okay with that. Um, two things. First of all, curious okay. what the question of the day is doing, and I'm also curious okay. about the info you're pulling up. First of all, uh, thank you to John Burke. A great job with all that sound today. Um, what is going on with the weather at Augusta? Because there's some, there's some big question marks. Okay, so your first question, the question of the day is, who would you put your money on at the Masters? We give you a fake $20. Would you put it on Ron Brooks and Scheffler collectively or the field? And uh, it is still the field that is losing. 54% of you are saying Ron Brooks or Scheffler are going to win, which is interesting on a number of fronts. Uh, that being said, I picked Brooks Kepka to win, so <laughs> who am I to talk? Uh, with regard to the weather, and I would like to take a deep dive on this with you tomorrow, Matt. And Andrew can build some graphics, and we can put together some really interesting stuff for tomorrow so we can take a much closer look at it. But Augusta right now, uh, the Augusta National Area is scheduled to get a ridiculous amount of rain right before the first tee ball. And to, get, to be a little bit more specific, from sort of like overnight, 12, 1 a.m., up until right around the first tee ball, which is traditionally – about 8 o'clock on the dot, roughly. We'll see where it ends up. But they're looking at over an inch of rain in that you know five, six-hour period and wind gusts sustained over 25 miles an hour that entire time. So by the time they tee off, it will have just literally just got about an inch of rain on Thursday. Now, it is supposed to rain a little bit during play on Thursday, especially on the front half of the morning wave tee times. So I don't know how that's going to affect things. We can we can talk we can talk really in depth about when that is tomorrow. The, Dom, when is the rain currently showing that it's going to end? The the heavy rain. The heavy rain will stop at eight a.m., but it's going to be sort of intermittently raining still after that time period. Which and is they're okay. supposed it's, to get. I'm just talking about yeah, they're supposed water. to get it's a deluge. Even even the the sub air can't keep up with all that and the drainage. So the, the, I think the deluge is going to happen just, you know, for several hours leading up to the first tee ball. Now, th again, this could change, but this is what, this is what it's looking That's like right now. But it is going to get, I mean, it looks like, for example, around 11 o'clock-ish, they're going to get another quarter inch of rain. So they're going to get dumped on again after a couple hours right now. So, so and then, you know, the rest of the day... Rough. Thursday is going to be especially in the morning odd, but for the guys who are teeing off like after 1 p.m., it is clear sailing with no issues. And temperatures, we're talking about, you know, mid to high 70s. So at that point in the round. And what about the so rest I, of the week? Again, are you, do you have uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday projected? Uh, yes, I do have projected. Uh, Friday, it is windy, very, very windy. Rain and beautiful weather. We're talking about temperatures probably in the range of 70, be about 70. Saturday, again, mid 70s. Sunday, it could get, by the time they're finishing up, it's going to be in the 80s. But Friday, there are wind gusts that will reach into the 30s right now on the schedule, uh, you know, according to this. Um, those are not sustained winds, but gusts that could get over 30. And then on Saturday, the gusts are going to hit in the 20s. And Sunday is going to be the most docile right now where you might have gusts, you know, in the teens, but realistically the winds will be, you know, docile and the temperatures will be in the mid to high 70s. So Sunday is going to be flawless. Friday was, I would say Friday is going to be windy and Thursday will be rainy. So all I don't right, know how you want to define all that, but there's plenty to discuss there. Yeah, and that is something we'll discuss as the week continues to progress because we'll have a better picture of what actually is going to happen as we get closer and closer to it. As to what's going to happen on the grounds of Augusta National today and tomorrow, let's pull up the presser schedule because it is very busy as people are coming in to address the media. Today, there you see Brian Harmon, uh, Subs De La Fuente, 
Matsuyama, Shoffley at 3.30, and then Akshay has just been added. Overnight, we got an update on the press conference schedule from uh, Augusta National. Tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., be Hovland at 10 a.m., the defending champion. 11 a.m. will be Tiger Woods. Rory at 12.30. Ludwig uh, is at 1. Clark is at 1.30. Jordan Spieth, you can see at 2.30. Scotty Scheffler at 3. And Brooks Kepka at 3.30. Just leave those up there for a second, Andrew, because it, it's compelling to, to look at, particularly to me, what's going on a Tuesday. Because Hovland played well last year. Uh, he's been kind of quiet this year, in fairness. But John Rahm is John Rahm. You just heard him talking about it. Uh, Tiger Woods at 11 a.m., I expect the same thing that we've gotten from Tiger all the time. Tiger's going to come in, and they're going to be like, Tiger, uh, are you just glad to be here? Is it a ceremonial thing? And Tiger's like, I'm here to win. I'm only here to win. And then, you know, Tiger struggles, and and the press is like, oh, you said you were here to win. He's like, guys, what do you want me to do? Uh, Rory at 1230. Again, right now, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know about you guys. Maybe you feel differently than I do. I'm just not feeling it with Rory right now. Ludwig, I'm feeling it. Clark, I'm feeling it. I think those two could do well. I think, I think the, you know, how well they get coached around Augusta National is going to matter. Right? At this point. Jordan Spieth, difference with Jordan coming in this year, is coming into this week's, last week's competition at the Valero. He was sixth on tour and putting. That's a different Jordan. When he has that Jordan, when that weapon is working for him, now his, his, his greens and regulations and stroke skate approach are not as strong as it have been in the past coming into the Masters. That's, that's where concern can be. Scotty's just strong across the board, and it's Brooks. So all that is very, very strong indeed. Recent past champions, just to... to Remind you of how and where. Geez, that, re- that something just popped in my head too, Dom. When you're talking about uh, Thursday morning, we've got the opening tee shots with Tom Watson and Jack Nicholas and Gary Player. It might be absolutely teaming down on top of them at 8 a.m. Thursday if morning. If it's not, we'll if there's no lightning, could it rain hard enough for them to postpone that? If there's no lightning, or are they just going to be do a postpone? It? They just wouldn't do it, but. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, my, my instinct would tell me yes. Bubba Watson in 12. You see Adam Scott in 13. Bubba again in 14. Jordan in 15. Danny Willett in 16 after Jordan's trouble at 12. Sergio broke through in 17. That was, that was exciting, that, the way that all played out. Uh, Patrick Reed in 18. Tiger in 19. DJ in 20. Hideki in 21, Scotty Scheffler in 22, John Rahm in 23 is the way that it went. Now, and we're going to show you this. I'm, I can promise you, I'm airtimes is about where we're going to go. I will show it to you and show it to you. And this is out of courtesy and respect to you guys, so you know where. So you guys take us through the schedule that you want. Let's start with digital coverage. Masters on the range starts today at noon. Masters on the range on Tuesday starts at 9 a.m. And then Masters on the range on Wednesday also starts at 9 a.m. Continuing with the coverage schedule. From Thursday, when we're talking about the rain coming in, Masters on the range from 8.30 a.m. Featured groups kicks off at 9.15. Amen corner coverage at 10.45 Holes 15 and 16 at 11.45. Masters highlights at 11.35. Dom, with, with, your, with the discussion board on Fairways of Life's YouTube channel, can people send photos in there, or is it, is, it's not like email, right? It's just, it's just uh, messages. Because I would love to see people set up for the Masters. You know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm gonna, I got every mobile device in the world wherever I am early, that I'll have set up. I don't know if you can send a picture like into a YouTube chat. I don't believe that you can. However, if you go to our website, fairwaysoflife.com, or you could just go this way. You can click on the contact tab. Just email contact at fairwaysoflife, contact at fairwaysoflife.com. 
and uh, those get sent to us at some point in time. So those will those will make our way to us if you and you can put any attachment you want in that. So you can send us as many pictures as you want, and as long as we can get them in time, we could we could show a few people setups and what That'd they've got fun. going on. What I normally do is I normally have the on the range stuff on my phone. Yeah, and then I have coverage on TV. And then I have a featured group on my laptop. That's traditionally how I do it. So you've got the guys getting ready to tee off, right? And I'll put that like on my laptop like this so I can look at it and listen to them. And then I've got um, featured group coverage on my laptop of said group. And then you've got like more general coverage up top of everything that's going on. Cool. I hey, mean, Dom, did I forget to tell you? I can't that. remember if I told you this, but I'm going to give away a uh, Callaway Paradigm AI smoke driver. To me. No. No, not to me. Oh, to the people, of course. Yes, that makes more sense. <laughs> did, I, did I tell you that already? Did I forget to tell no, you? No, you didn't tell me that. When do you want to do that? I don't know. Maybe we'll We're do supposed it this to week. discuss this off the air, but that's okay. Maybe we'll do it this week. If, if, uh, we, if, can produce if our... it, we can produce right now on the fly. When, no, when, how and when and where together. are we giving this away? Uh, it's, it's the same way that all these, these types of things work, where you, you have to follow... I don't know. I don't know all the details. I don't know how it, how it goes, but you have to follow. You have, you have, you have to it tag. You just give me away a driver. <laughs> uh, like on but Instagram and like Twitter and all that junk. And then once you have all these people, re- it's a means of registering people. Yeah, sure. Your followers grow. Great. And you, you go to, you go to one of them. We decide which one we're going to do the pick from and we pick a name and that person wins a driver. So anyway, I sweet. think I'm going to do it this way. Andrew, but is that I'll, a picture I'll... of one? What do you got? I think Andrew's got some nice pictures. There's got to be that, – that's the generic one. Do you have video from them, Andrew? We've got a yeah, video. Put, yeah, you can throw it in there. He's got it in preview. That's what we're looking at. I, I don't know if that, that picture, picture sells anything. It kind of looks like a face <laughs> of a driver. Well, I, you know what? Who doesn't this want a driver? driver? Is... That's why I was asking if I was going to get it. You can't. I could use no. a new driver. <laughs> yeah. that's, why, that's why you're kept away from the storeroom. There you go. I've now never, you're I've talking. Never, uh, yeah, see, that's a cool picture right there. I love the soul, what they did with the soul of that club. Look at how beautiful that is. It's like a work of yeah, art. Yeah, it is man. gorgeous. It is absolutely Oh, gorgeous. there's some video, Andrew. Wow. Uh, Andrew's Plus like, 11 yeah, yards. In your face. You guys I making fun of me. I can use some 11 yards. 12 yards off the off-center hits. I get more. I get all oh, this is. But I don't get this. That's so anyway, yeah, I'm going to give this. Going to somebody else. Driver it's, it's got, um, <laughs> it's got a, a stiff shaft in it, and it's. I think it's. I think Ooh, it's. A, look at that. Ten point five. Uh, the one I'm giving out. I love it. Sweeter from I love every it. spot. Oh, Good decision. You. Yeah. Good so, decision. anyways, if I didn't tell you that, uh, Andrew, where we let off, left off, where did we leave off with the airtime? Just so I can continue to show the world. Okay. Here you go. Friday's coverage. Masters on the range starts at 8.30 again. Feature group at 9.15. Amen Corner starts a little earlier, 12.45. I think that was earlier. 15 and 16 at 11.45. Masters highlights at 11.35 p.m. in the evening. As to Saturday's coverage, here we go. Roll it in. Masters on the range at 11 o'clock. Feature group at 10.15. Amen Corner, 11.45. Holds 12 eh, or 15 and 16 at 12.30. What's that? We need to talk? What is that, Dom? I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's probably in some of the preview materials I got. Stand by. We got so we much need stuff. To I mean, talk they're doing so the much Masters stuff. Did you see the, uh, the thing they're doing on... Uh, I don't know when they're airing it. They're... they're, they're they're reliving Tiger's Masters. Oh, you, seen that? you know what that is? That's that's. I don't uh, think that's what that is, though. That's yeah, that's else. special programming leading into the live coverage. That's what it is. I thought maybe it was something that was originating on site, but it looks like that's that CBS coverage because they're going over the the Asia Pacific Amateur Championship. Then they're going to go through highlights, blah blah blah, past. I get it. And then 2024, here's the key thing that you guys want to know. 2024 Masters third round coverage on CBS starts at 3 p.m. The encore coverage is at 8 p.m. So here's Sunday's. 
11 a.m. for On the Range. Feature group, 10, 15. Same times there, 11.45, Amen Corner. 15 and 16, 12.30. Highlight show, special highlight show. Jim Nance is at one. Bop, bop. 24, Masters, final round coverage, 2 p.m. on Sunday. And then the encore coverage in the evening. All right, so, and we will go through that. I will continue to do that with you as folks so that we're aware of all of the coverage and where you can get it and you know for years the complaint about the masters was that the coverage the tv coverage just wasn't long enough but in the digital world we live in now there's so much coverage right there's a lot of ways to see it uh, i i don't i wouldn't say that i necessarily agree with the the idea that you know coverage should start at 3 p.m i still would rather see it start at 10 p.m in earnest why not but at least we have options now in, in a lot of different ways. So uh, anything else you got for me, Dom? You want to go over uh, what the voting is on whether you take Rom? I want to talk about everything forever, but we've got, we've got several days to do that. It's at 53% now. People are still going with Rom Brooks and Scheffler. We'll have a chance tomorrow to go more in depth on the odds. We'll do a little bit more. Uh, uh, focus stuff on the weather. I'd like Plus to we're gonna start, start to hear from people. The golf course. Yes. Want to hear from the people. Um, I think Michael East is joining us tomorrow from ESPN, who's oh, on cool. site. Doing buddy, some, he's doing some of the coverage we're talking about. So there's a lot. There's there's plenty to go through, and I want to talk about all of it forever. So I get I get goosebumps when I wake up Monday morning Masters week. I mean, it's it feels so close. I can taste it. It is. <laughs> it is upon us. The first major <laughs> of the year on the men's side of the game is literally here. The week is upon us. Hope you guys have a great Monday. Looking forward to sharing the next few days with you, of course, and sharing the spirit of the Masters. It is underway Masters Week at Augusta National. We'll be with you again tomorrow. If we're spared, until then, be well. Bye for now.